everyone, I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. I am here for the last weekend of the Calgary Stampede, and today I'm going to be taking a look, uh, or a little showdown of sorts, between the top Bitcoin hardware wallets. It's going to be the Trezor versus the Ledger Nano S versus the Keep Key. What do I like? What do I not like? What is missing? What can be added? Uh, and we're going to see which one comes out on top. So let's take a look. Okay, so I have done videos on all three of these hardware wallets before. I will link them in the cards here if you're on YouTube. I will also link them down below in the description of this video so you can check those out independently if you'd like to see them in their full form. Uh, that being said, I'm going to be taking a look at four areas when it comes to these uh, hardware wallets. So one will be coin support. What coins do they support? Um, obviously Bitcoin will be one, but um, Ethereum, Dash, Ripple, whatever other coins they support, I will mention and uh, let you know which ones are capable of being held on these devices. Also, user interface. What does it look like when you're using it? Is it pretty to use or is it pretty bare bones? Is it easy to navigate? All that stuff. Um, also, what other available platforms can you use these wallets on? Can you use them with your phone? Can you use them in your browser? Is there a web app? Is there a downloadable app for your desktop? Um, and finally, just the form factor. What is the device like in your hands? Is it easy to carry around and hold and use? Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So let's get into it. I'm not going to do this in any particular order, so uh, here we go. So I'm going to get started here with the Trezor. First off, what coins are supported with your Trezor? Uh, well, looking here at the website, it looks like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Zcash, Litecoin, Namecoin, Dogecoin, Dash, uh, the Bitcoin Testnet, and all ERC20 tokens, which means any of the tokens that were built on top of Ethereum. Uh, so that's a fair amount. That's pretty good. Um, no complaints here. What about the user interface? And when I say the user interface, I'm talking about uh, their web app uh, when you use it from their website. Well, um, to me, it was pretty simple to use, uh, especially when it came to Bitcoin and Litecoin and uh, some of the other uh, currencies that they offer. Um, yeah, pretty simple to understand. Uh, the only issue I had was that uh, when you're using anything to do with Ethereum, any of the tokens issued on top of it, Ethereum Classic, or just the Ethereum, uh, I guess, Ether itself, you get bumped to myetherwallet.com. Uh, which in itself, I understand why it was done. It was to be able to support all of these tokens without having to build that out uh, within Trezor's hardware, or sorry, within Trezor's software itself. But um, it makes for a choppy experience when you're trying to uh, use Ethereum and use Bitcoin and use other tokens. Um, it's just, it's different. Um, and it would be nice if that experience was uniform across every token that you use uh, with their platform. Um, again, I understand why it was done, but I tend to look at things from, uh, what would a new user look at this and th um, think? Uh, and. Typically, if you get bumped to an external site, people can get confused. They get used to one thing and then they start using another and it's it can get confusing for new users. So um, I feel like it could be better when it comes to any Ethereum related tokens on Trezor. Um, but that being said, at least there's support for them. Uh, what about other available platforms? Where can you use your Trezor other than with the web app uh, that they have available? Um, so you can use it on Mycelium, uh, you can use it with your Copay wallet, you can use it with Electrum and Multibit, um, and a, a host of other wallets. So there's no complaints here as far as usability and compatibility. Um, I mean, it is kind of a default uh, hardware wallet for a lot of people, so a lot of third-party apps have integrated with it uh, to allow you to use it. So 
Yeah, great usability. And last thing, what about form factor? Well, this thing is pretty little. If you can see here, it's really, really tiny, nice and thin. Um, it can go on the end of a keychain really simply. Um, and this thing to carry around is a breeze. It's really, really nice, um, but it doesn't, uh, with it being so small, it doesn't impede the use, like the buttons are easy to press. Um, yeah, I love having this thing on my keychain. So, um, yeah, good job Trezor. Okay, so on to the keep key. Uh, let's go through uh, this list I have again. So coin support, what can you use with the keep key? Well, obviously Bitcoin, but also listed here on their site, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Namecoin, the Bitcoin testnet, Ethereum, and Dash. Okay, uh, so I have again done a video on on keep key before and uh yeah i i enjoy it i still use it um a good way to store your coins now what about the user interface so when i say user interface here what i'm talking about actually is their chrome extension to be used in the browser um so i've, I've got a couple things to say about the user interface um one it's simple which is nice uh, because you can tell what you're doing. Um, there's no confusion there. But I will say that it's pretty bare bones. When you look at it, um, there's not a lot there, which I guess there doesn't really need to be, but um, it would be nice to, to, I guess, tidy it up or spruce it up a little bit to make it look um, more inviting instead of just kind of a the, the blank slate that you have right now. Um, that being said, it works and it does the trick, so I guess I can't really complain. Um, let's get into the available platforms. Where can you use the Keep Key other than with their Chrome extension? So the Keep Key can be used uh, not only with the Chrome extension, uh, they can also be used with, uh, what is it, Electrum, Multibit, and it can be plugged into your phone to use with Mycelium as well. So it doesn't quite have the range of applications that you can use with, say, the Trezor. Um, but that being said, it does have the heavy hitters. Uh, so again, can't complain here. Little, a few less options, but still very, very easy to use uh, with your choice here. Now, how about the form factor and the actual device itself? Now, the one thing I will say about this, even though mine's a little bit dirty here, is uh, this is a nice looking device. Everything about it feels pretty premium. Um, the back is metal here. You've got a nice glass front. And um, it f you get that this is a quality item feel to it. That being said, this is large, I will say. Um, so I think that's because it's meant to be more of a, you know, keep it at home and use it um, for long-term storage. Obviously, it's a cold wallet. Uh, but that being said, um, I wouldn't want to be, you know, I've, I've already got crap in my pockets, right? I've got keys, I've got my phone, I've got my wallet. Um, I don't want to add this to the mix. Um, it's just something extra to be carrying around. Um, so I don't know, like in comparison to my phone, again, it's not that big, but it is, you know, it's, it's thick, thicker, and um, you know, it's about, t what, two thirds the height of my phone, and I've got a Galaxy S7 Edge. Um, so, yeah, it's it's bigger than the Trezor and the Nano S that I'm going to take a look at. Um, so it's more of a, for me, keep it at home uh, for additional storage. Um, I probably wouldn't be carrying this around day to day, and I'm not going to put it, obviously, on my keychain because I can't. Um, but that being said, it is a nice looking and nice feeling device. Okay, let's move on to the Ledger Nano S. So what coins are supported here? So I've got the list in front of me and it's pretty sizable. Uh, we've got Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Zcash, Dash, Ripple, Stratus, Komodo, and all ERC20 tokens. So any token built on top of Ethereum. Um, and the list is too long to read. So um, as far as coin support, it looks like Ledger Nano S has at least as many as the Ledger, uh, sorry, at least as many as the Trezor, um, but 
I think more actually. I think they have more support uh, for the Ledger Nano S, which is fantastic. Um, Okay, what about the user interface? So when I say user interface here, I am talking about the Chrome applications that you can download from your browser uh, to use with the Ledger Nano S. Um, and I actually quite enjoy I quite enjoy these uh, these Chrome apps. They are easy to use. They give you a good overview. Everything you have and you need is right there in front of you. Um, and on top of this, the user interface across everything, including Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, is pretty much uniform, more or less. There's a few features that differ from, from currency to currency, but when you look across it, it's easy to tell where everything is. You don't have to learn a new platform when you're using Ethereum. Um, the only exception is if you're using ERC20 tokens, okay? So if you're using a token that's built on top of Ethereum, then you're going to get ported over to my Ether wallet again. But when you're using Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, you're still within the same uh, software that you'd be using for Bitcoin or Litecoin or Zcash or anything like that. It's all the same. Um, so bonus points here for the ledger uh, because it is user friendly when you're dealing with straight up um, cryptocurrency on it. What about available platforms? Where can you use your Ledger Nano S outside of their app in the Chrome App Store? Okay, so let's take a look at this. There are quite a few options here. So uh, again, you can download those uh, Chrome apps. You can, da, 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 da. you can use My Ether Wallet. Of course, again, you can port through there, but you can also just use My Ether Wallet. So if you want to use Ethereum and your Ledger Nano S through MyEtherWallet.com, that's possible. Uh, you can use Green Address, Green Bits, Electrum, Mycelium, Copay. So um, you've got a mix of desktop and mobile apps that you can use and plug into. What about the form factor? So let's take a look at the Ledger Nano S. This is what it looks like. It basically looks like a USB stick. You can tell that you could uh, put it on a keychain here and it just swings open like this. There's a couple little buttons on the top for your controls and a tiny little screen on the front so you can see what you're doing. Um, I love this thing. It is fantastic. Um, it is small enough to go on my keychain. Let's just do a side-by-side -side comparison. So this is the Ledger Nano S next to the Trezor. So as far as height, they're about the same. As far as thickness, the, the Nano S is just a tiny bit thicker, but not by much. And then obviously uh, the Trezor is, is wider here. Um, and then when you hold that up to the Keep Key, um, it's about two thirds of the height of the Keep Key. It's thinner than it, and um, you know, obviously, as far as width goes, it's about half. Um, so this thing is ideal for carrying around if you want to do that. You can leave it at home, of course, but uh, if you want to have it on your keychain uh, for use with a mobile wallet, then it's a great option. Um, and nice and easy to use too, these uh, dual buttons up top are pretty simple and uh, yeah, I haven't run into an issue with it. Having gone through all of that with each of these three hardware wallets, what is my favorite? What wins? What is my de facto carry around with me and love it all the time wallet? Well, the winner for me is da -da -da, my Ledger Nano S. Um, why? Why? Okay, so this is a personal choice. Um, what works for me may not work for others, but so why do I want, oh, I like this. Number one, I want to be able to carry this around because I'm using it on mobile. I'm using it with my mycelium wallet. So I like to have this on my keychain. I want to have it with me. I want to be able to plug in if I need to move some coins around. That's not to say I keep everything on this. Obviously I have a Trezor, I have a keep key and I use those as well. But this, um, it's convenient to carry around. Two, I love that the user interface is the same across all of these cryptocurrencies that you can use there. I don't want to be ported to another website when I'm trying to use it. Um, 
So for me, it makes more sense to have something where everything's uniform across. Also, I'm dealing with a lot of people that are new to cryptocurrency, and I don't want to be teaching them two different platforms uh, to use the same piece of hardware with. So for me, that that's what I love about it. It's, it's uniform across. It's easy to carry around. Um, it's also... I can use it with mycelium, which all of these wallets I can use with mycelium, so I can use it on the go. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of support for other platforms as well. Um, and yeah, so I, I guess it's just, for me, this works. Now that being said, uh, the Trezor, as far as a, a de facto carry around wallet, this was mine for a while as well. Um, the only thing that made me switch was the fact that uh, a Ethereum and Ethereum Classic being ported through my etherwallet.com. I just, I didn't want to use that site, so I didn't. So I switched back. Uh, if I'm using other coins, then I use it with my Ledger Nano S. Um, now, people from Trezor, if you're watching this, um, I think the way that Ledger went uh, as far as using my Ether wallet just for uh, ERC20 tokens and then having Ethereum and Ethereum Classic native to their app uh, is the way to go. It makes for a much friendlier user interface. So if you're watching and you want to take a tip from just some dude with a camera, then, then great. Um, I would love to see that because you guys make a fantastic product. Now, as far as the Keep Key goes, you guys are still incredible. This is still an incredible device. Um, uh, the main reason that this isn't my de facto wallet is because I'm using it on the go. So I can't put this on my keychain. It's a little bit bigger. It's a beautiful device, but I can't I, you know, I'm not going to have this in my pocket all the time. Um, so that was the main reason. Um, as far as your user interface, um, I mean, it could be a little bit prettier, but it does the trick. So I, I'm not really complaining there. Uh, I love that you guys work with mycelium. Um, keep keep going with that. And uh, I've heard rumblings that mycelium is integrating uh, more coins. So what I'm hoping is I'll be able to use any of these wallets with mycelium and other cryptocurrencies as well. Um, so I'm going to wrap that up there. Uh, just a general overview here. I really enjoy all of these wallets. These are all incredible products. For me, the Ledger Nano S is what's working best at the moment. Um, that's not to say that I won't swap these in and out, but for right now, for multi-currency, easy to carry around, de facto hardware wallet, Ledger Nano S is it for me. Um, but keep key, you guys are awesome. Trezor, you guys are awesome. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's had any part in, in making these wallets because the fact that I can have and use these incredible products and secure my cryptocurrency is amazing. So thank you guys so much. And um, yeah, I had a blast using all of these. During the process of filming and editing this video, I forgot one very important thing that I didn't want to miss, uh, and it has to do with the Keep Key. Uh, they've done one thing that neither of the other wallets did, and that is incorporate Shapeshift so that seamlessly within their app, you can convert between coins. This is something I would love to see on all of the wallets, uh, but I did want to give props to Keep Key for doing this. Bonus points to you guys for incorporating Shapeshift. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe, drop a tip if you're able to, and share this video. I will see you guys next time on the BTC Sessions.